Buses in Pro Tools are one of the most misunderstood tools within a mixing process. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how to create them and how to use them to its fullest potential. Hey, my name is Macro from Mixing with Macro. I'm a professional recording and mixing engineer, and I've done recording and mixing for major record labels and many independent artists. And I've made it my goal to help you streamline your recording and mixing process for fast and consistent results. If you can change your mixing process to have mixes completed in less than 30 minutes, then how would that change the way you approach mixing? That question is what led me to create a five-step cheat sheet that's in my description, absolutely free, that can take your mixes from zero to 100 in less than 30 minutes. I laid out all the plugins I use, I laid out the plugin chains that I use, and all the settings within my plugins, and also the mindset behind them. And you can read through the entire thing in less than 10 minutes. So go ahead and check it out. Now I'll show you why it's important to understand the mix bus. Let's get started. Now when it comes to buses, think of buses as a pathway throughout your session. So this is where signal flow comes into play. All the bus is, is an auxiliary track in Pro Tools. If you was to hit Command Shift N, we will get the option to create a new track. Auxiliary tracks for how we work with it are stereo. We would select an aux input, all right? So we have our vocals here. Now let's create a lead track for now. Put it here and make this a different color let's call it bright green here's the reason why a lead track is great now we have our lead auxiliary track everything is going out of our master which is this right here is our master track and it's going out a1 and 2 that means it's going straight out of our speakers there's nothing interfering with this audio here going straight same thing with our beat it goes straight out any processing has to happen here so we want to use buses simply because we're able to control the audio before it goes straight out of the speakers so let's send all of this to our lead aux that we just created all these tracks are now being sent to our lead aux right here so i rename and colored everything so we know what's what now we have all of these going out to our aux input here now let's just say we have all these vocals and we want to process them meaning we're going to do eq we're going to do compression we're going to do deessing now instead of putting an eq here let's just put an eq let's just pick any eq all right so you have a bunch of eqs going there and now you have a compressor you have to put it all the way here all right on everything and then let's just say we did some deessing right after all right this is a very basic setup now we have all these things here now let's just say we did some editing here on our first track so we decided you know the most basic thing we want to cut all the lows all right we're not doing anything else we cut all the lows out it was around 150 is fine then we got to go into this one and do the same thing cut all the lows boom 150 and then we have to go in here and do the same thing call the lows Turn it on. You see why it's inefficient? Because you have to do it here and then do it here and then do it here and then do it here. It doesn't make any sense. Or aux track, since everything is going through our aux track, you could see here the outputs, they're all going through our aux track. And we have the same setup here. What we've then done is eliminated the need to go in and mix all of these tracks individually. So now instead of making EQ decisions or compression decisions on each different track, we just do it on one track, boom. What does that do? That creates consistency throughout our mix. Now, any vocal that goes on any of these tracks, because it's being sent into our lead aux, what we have done is we have created consistency. Now I can drag this piece of vocal down here to make it one long piece of vocal there, add my fades or whatever in between. And I can trust that this is being processed the same, all right? It's not gonna switch. So let's just say we had the same EQs here. Let's just say we didn't have the exact same settings on the EQ we had on lead one and we had different settings on lead two. Now, if I wanted to drag these together, then it would sound different and that would throw our mix off. Now we do this for consistency. So the beginning is that we had everything going straight out A1 and 2. But instead of going straight out to speakers, we've created a lead aux and then we sent 
all of our vocals into our lead aux and then we did our processing then it goes out the speakers so we got to save time when it comes to doing our tweaks in our plugins here instead of doing it on multiple tracks because imagine if you had a bunch of leads a bunch of double stacks a bunch of ad libs so that's the power of an auxiliary and then we can even dive deeper so let's create another aux command shift n let's create another auxiliary let's just call it all vox box and now we're going to send our lead into our all vox all right so now it goes in so what do we have we have all our vocals as fit we have all our vocals going into our lead aux and now we have it going into our all vox aux all right so you can see the vocals are coming out in and then it's coming out in all right and then it's going out the speakers okay so let's just say for instance we want to add some glue so what glue does it's basically what it's saying glue is basically sticking things together to make it more sound more cohesive so let's just say we wanted to add another layer of compression here just a slight compression you know nothing crazy like we would do just something slight or whatever now we have all our vocals sounding more together than it would have on our lead aux all right and if you wanted to add whatever if you wanted to then make all of your vocals a little bit brighter it's like all right i want all my vocals to sound a little bit brighter after i've done all my processing here then you can do it on your all vox and this is the power of buses it's very very easy to do you can do the same thing with your beat you can do the same thing with just your doubles you can do it with just your ad libs this is why we use buses now here is another very well known reason why we use a bus simply because of this if we wanted to do reverbs or delays without a bus we have to put a reverb and delay on each of our tracks and process them each the same do what works for you but i'm showing you a very efficient way to work instead of putting a reverb on all the different tracks we can now create an auxiliary call this reverb let's create another one now we can put our reverb here Put our delay for consistency we change the color boom right now here is a trick we can now send all our lead auxes to our reverb now instead of putting reverb sends on all of these tracks here we can just put it on our lead aux and everything's affected the same way now we have a universal sound and reverb that gives our mix a more consistent feel all around now you free up a lot of space where you can do additional processing these are the power of buses look how much more space you have to work with within your session now you're not managing a bunch of plugins all over the place you know you're only managing a few plugins this is a very efficient way to work it comes with understanding signal flow you have to understand signal flow understand the signal flow within your session and understand what a send is what an aux track is and how we can benefit you in your session and remember i have an entire video on my channel where i show you how to build out an advanced template where i show you how to create all your audio tracks and all your auxiliary tracks and how to route them all right so go ahead and check that out and that will definitely help you if you need help with that and the free cheat sheet that i have in my description is definitely very helpful when it comes to which plugins to use how to use the chains where i'm using them in my template so go ahead and check that out and you will be able to know how to use the plugins and which order to use them and where to use them i even include my plugin settings so you can know how much to use them so go ahead and check that out all right i'll see you in the next video now you have a better understanding of how to use mix bus and what role they play within your workflow so go ahead and make amazing mixes and make sure to check my description for that free cheat sheet where i'll guide you through how to get your mixes sounding amazing in only five steps thank you for sticking around with me today i'll see you in the next video peace